Hello everyone, I uh, hope you're enjoying the latest update. I just watched uh, Books of Blood, the Clive Barker adaptation on Hulu. It was pretty fun. I love horror anthology things and it was definitely what I needed right now horror-wise. But we're going to go into, uh, as far as the retro arc here, if you have the rape background in this music, if you'd like to disable it, you can simply go to right your settings, audio, you can go down to menu sounds, and you can toggle it off if you don't want it, you can toggle it on if you do. It's up to you ultimately how you want to do it. I mean, not only is it aesthetically pleasing as far as the significance of the 1980s, but it also helps you calculate how your current memory is running because if it's laggy and choppy and stuttery, that means your memory is being CPU intensive wise. But we're going to leave it off for the moment, and I'm going to show you something interesting here. Uh, we're going to talk about Dynamic Recompiler, which is a double-edged sword on the Mini Classics. Let's load up an example here, so I don't have to really get into layman's terms here. Uh, you know, like, the technical terms here. We'll get into just playing a site bike. We'll play, like, this GameCube edition to start with here. And just watch what happens when I play the game per normal. I'm going to show you the difference between Dynamic Recompiler, Non-Dynamic Recompiler, as well as Extreme and Amped. So let's start the game per normal here, and, um... Essentially, Dynamic Recompiler has calculated data on the fly, and as a result, it can actually run out of memory in the process, especially with the 256 megabytes of limited RAM on the Mega Drive SNES NES Classics and the 1 gigabyte of RAM on the PlayStation Classic. Right here, I ran out. That's Dynamic Recompiler. You can tend to have crashes, freezes, or burns depending on the game. A Killer Instinct would typically crash within 60 seconds, Mario Kart within 45 minutes to 14 hours, and so on. Other games like Giant Power Battles, Crash within 30 seconds. And, uh, again, that's what it is. But, uh, we're gonna do this again now. Check this out. What I try to do with my releases is have the equivalent of having dynamic recompiler, but more stability. And just watch right here what I do. I like to have the extreme amp performance, and this is what I'm trying to do without the crash and freeze that are burning. And, uh, we're gonna play the game like I did. Essentially having a dynamic recompiler help us out, but also the better performance and speed, like this. Check this out. This is what it's all about. Extreme amp performance. <laughs> there we go, guys and gals. Bam. Now we're going to load a game which has tremendous issues with Dynamic Recompiler here. Uh, right now, let me do this. We're going to go to uh, Look Out Inside Your True Dummy, PSX. And we're going to load up this great, great game which many people have had tremendous issues running on me classics. We're talking about Judge Dredd. We're going to run with the standard PCSX Rearm Core right now. Now, like with the Excite Bike example, I'm going to give you a little bit more about how it works right now. We're going to start this game, which uh, along with other games like Extreme Games, Donald Duck, and of course Jedi Power Battles, Killer Instinct, Paper Mario, Yoshi Story, etc., etc. I mean, if you ever run to a game that slows down, freezes, or crashes, it is typically due to Dynamic Recompiler, but I'm doing what I can as far as optimization with memory, etc., to make these run better with each and every update. And uh, just watch and learn here. Going to give you a few pointers there on running this game, which is a tough one to run. We're going to start the game per normal, and like I said, it's going to probably freeze the crash or burn within roughly 30 seconds to start the game, just like Jedi Power Battles. But I put something out in the last release, which handles this way, way better, kind of like in my Dolphin Blue video with the Dreamcast Extreme amp the other day. An awesome, awesome game. If you like stuff like this, definitely check out the Die Hard Trilogy, Die Hard 2 stage, particularly with the Unreal's Shmup Awesomeness, as well as the Judge Dread for 3DO. I mean, what is your favorite Unreal's Shmup game? Carnival is mine. Okay? I mean, everything's fine right now, but watch what happens when I get to the top of stairs. It will invariably slow down or crash to a freeze due to dynamic right there. It froze already. Just like that. The game's done. I can't even play it now. It's going to hang there for a while and probably just crash right back to the main retro arc menu. But we're going to go into retro arc settings here. I'm going to reload the game with something I put in the last update here. Just check it out for yourself. Like I said, I want to be able to play this game, and I did what I could to make it run better. It's a tough game. It might need a little bit more work to run even better, but I did what I could to get it run as well as I could. We're going to actually run this with the PC SX Neon Extreme Amped Core. And like we did with the Excite Park, where we're going out of bounds, off to victory, out of the stage, bouncing up from the top to the bottom. This is what we're going to be doing here. The game's going to be running better. Judge, Jerry Executioner, just like Sylvester Stallone in the 1990s classic with Rob Schneider as a turn and comic relief. I also like the Carl Urban remake, which came out roughly in the last 10 years, and uh, that was a fun, fun movie. But for those of you who watch foreign cinema, you might realize that Dread and another movie called Raid, which is a great martial arts movie that came out around the same time within... Uh, probably roughly six months of each other, they have a similar plot line where they try to take on a criminal at the top of a high-rise bill and taking out 
literally hundreds of enemies and villains on the way. It's such an awesome thing. And going back farther to even the old movie Mills on Wheels by Jackie Chan, similar plot line, but it was converted into a game called Kung Fu. I mean, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, they're in so many things, but I also hope that uh, Iko Uwais, who is the great protagonist in the awesome martial arts movie, and right here, look, we had a little bit of a freezer, but watch what I can do. I can do one of two things. I can go into quick my new options here with the Extreme App Core, and watch very, very carefully here. Here's the memory clear. Think of SRGB toggle on the Nintendo 64 cores when they slow down to a crawl. Here, I can just simply turn Dynamic Recompiler off, play the game for a couple seconds here, it resets the time of it. Then I go back to the game. And then I'm going to turn it back on, and the game's going to be fine again. Now that I know it's fine again, I'm going to do a save state. How awesome is that? And here's the funny thing. Like I was doing Turbo Fire Mode activate my other video. Watch what happens if I do Turbo Fire here. It's going to warn me. <laughs> I don't fire cheating player too. <laughs> That's funny. Do another save point. But yeah, you can literally play the entire game, and uh, just like I did with the Dolphin Blue video, and I've made it through the entire game already with uh, only a few points where I actually had to do the dynamic recompiler toggle off. And don't even attempt to do this on the standard PCSX RAM core because you're gonna have issues with the freeze, and you might even get a red light on your PlayStation Classic. You have to reinstall Auto Blame, Blame Thing, Retro Boot, Extreme Injector, etc., and uh, have corruption on the integrity of your flash drive. There we go. It happened one more time. But we're going to wait a second here. Do the uh, thing one more time. We're going to go to Retro Settings here. Click my new options. And again, it only happens sporadically. I mean, there are literally entire stages I did it without it happening at all. But we're going to do Dynamic Recompiler off again. Go back to the game. There we go. And then we're going to go back into Turn on the Get. And again, this is probably the worst case example of a game that is tough to run on Mid Classics. It's back on. Resume. And we're going to be fine again. There we go. Just cleared by itself there. And we're going to be able to get to the second stage easily. Just watch. Like I said, I played for multiple minutes at a time without having issues at all. But if you try this on the standard PCSX core, you're going to have really, really bad issues. I love this music here. I mean, this reminds me of, like, the uh, Demolition Man on 3DO as well. <laughs> oh, this is cool. I love that you can actually shoot the monitors in the background, too. Love that little intricacies, nuances of shooting things in the background. But let's try to get to the second stage here. Second stage mode activate. And I'm doing a little burst of fire right now, so I don't actually get the uh, triggered warning for cheating. But my gun jammed. Oh no. No harm, no foul. And yes, you can have your gun jammer overheat like multiple games. I'm, I can actually do uh, cheat for that to make sure my gun never overheats too. But it's kind of cool that they detect the auto cheat in here as far as auto fire. Just like when you're in a real pinball table and you try tilting it. I've done tilting in video games where you actually hold down the button like even in the old Atari 2600 pinball game. But then uh, it, it'll actually uh, make you fill the game. Fire to continue. We're on stage 2 mode activate here. I'm going to do another save point once we start the stage here. Like I said, if you have, like, a really, really bad crash point, uh, you can do another thing, too. There we go. Save and state. And let's see how far we make it. This kind of reminds me. Okay, it did it one more time right there. Now we're going to go into Retro Extensions, quick menu options. Like I said, I'm going to try to fix this up just like with Star GB Toggle, where the memory optimization is going to be better and you won't have to worry about doing this every time. But we're going back in the game here. Okay. Options. And like I said, every game has their variable cycles. Like, you can play probably uh, Mario 64 for like 100 hours before it happens. Other games like Mario Kart 64, 14 to 14 hours. Extreme games for PlayStation 1, about 15 minutes. Donald Duck for PlayStation, uh, about 15 minutes. Jedi Power Battles in this game, maybe 30 seconds, depending on the intensity of the game. But with Extreme Amp, it's running better than ever before, clearly. And I'm not trying, I'm just trying to show you exactly how things go here. Let's get a little bit farther in. I'll do another save point for the helmet here. Let's try to get to the second stage here. And like I said, there are other Judge Dread games too, like on Game Boy, Mega Drive, SNES. I typically would play the ones on Mega Drive because they don't tone down the violence. Like even the Robocop vs. Terminator game, which is on Super Nintendo, and even Mega Drive. It is way better Mega Drive because you literally just Mortal Kombat violence rip apart enemies with your gunfire. And I'm going to have to showcase that in one of the next videos. We'll do a Robocop vs. Terminator video. This game's playing awesome. And I thought the game froze, but I actually just had to continue there. It did not freeze. I am the law. <laughs> okay. And sometimes you actually, if you just let the game sit, it'll actually do the cycle repeat alone just because of the amplitude of the core, the way I did it. It'll actually reset on itself. And I'm trying to do this with, like, Killer Instinct, etc. too. 
There we go. <laughs> you can turn off auto fire completely too. Like I said, it won't be on by default. I just have it on because of the other stuff I've been working into the release. Oh, this is so cool. I love these on real shmup games here. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial on how to, you know, turn on turbo fire and turn off as well. Like I said, it actually has some conflicts with other cores and games. That's why I want to do a little bit of a tutorial on it. Okay, let's do another save point. Oh, we got a little cinema. Awesome. Bam. <laughs> I wonder who did the model for that. I wonder if that was really supposed to be stolen or just the guy standing in. Because even like the uh, uh, one Steven Seagal game, it wasn't even him. It was a lookalike guy doing the uh, digitization there. Okay, we got the save. Oh, awesome. Let's get these lined up together here for double firepower. And I'm using L1 to reload. Oh, this is so cool. What's that? Let's do the modern... I made a third stage in here. And that was most definitely a fun demonstration. Like I said, I'm going to try to do my best to get performance and speed optimizations working much better in a future update so you don't have to worry about doing toggling on or off of SRGB toggle for Nintendo 64 and, of course, Dynamic Recompiler toggle for the PlayStation and so on and so on. We're going to go look on the side of Trick Dummy and do one or two more demonstrations real quick. We'll go to another Dread game. We'll do particularly the Judge Dread for Mega Drive here with Genesis plus GX. And uh, like I said, playing games like RoboCop vs. Terminator on Super Nintendo versus Mega Drive, it's the contrast to watching the original RoboCop with Rip Roaring, flesh being ripped from limb by bullets, violence, and on Mega Drive, in contrast to like watching like Baby's Day Out. I mean, that's the violence, like going from G to R-rated violence. And uh, many other games follow suit, but RoboCop vs. Terminator is one of the best examples. Play it on Super Nintendo, then play it on Mega Drive. If you don't, I'll play it in my next video to show you. And also, if you watch the original RoboCop 1 2, they are so insanely violent, it is ridiculous. They are way ahead of their time as far as violence is concerned. And you might forget the fact that the red character from the great, great show, that 70s show, was actually a villain in RoboCop, and he's absolutely insane in that. Let's check this out real quick here. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. So far, so good. We got this cool and empty music here. Blood coming out of the enemies here. <laughs> okay. It feels a little bit like Alien and uh, Alien 3, and of course the Alien Way 4 Technologies game on DS. Seems to be like a solid staple uh, example of a game here. And obviously, it's not quite like uh, Batman Forever, which is a uh, notoriously bad Acclaim game. And even though Acclaim is on a title, it doesn't mean they made the game. I mean, many times it comes down to them being a publisher and other companies making the game. But so far, so good. Pretty decent game here. I play something like uh, Terminator 2, and I love playing the Tommy Tellerico Terminator out of, of course, uh, Sega City. That is the best of them all. He also did the soundtrack to Virgin Games, Cool Spot. That is an awesome, awesome game. Love the cool spot goes to Hollywood on PlayStation 1. One of my absolute favorite games. Even has shmup stages in it. A fun, fun game, and this looks like it's definitely better than the Super Nintendo version by far. A little bit more blood, and uh, definitely not bad at all. Get to the chopper. No, <laughs> just kidding. We're going to go look on the Central to Dummy. Back to the Dread Voter here. And uh, let's do for our final demonstration, Demolition Man on 3DO. Look at that awesome artwork there. And Wesley Snipes still on for the win here. We're going to do this with the Opera Core. And let's see how this runs for a minute. Oh, hell yeah. One of the best 3DO exclusives, period. Bar none. And also one of the best on rails. Schmups along with Carnival, etc. And including the Judge Dread Arcade and PlayStation 1 versions. We're going to play this awesome, awesome, sauce of a game for a few moments here. And it makes me want to go back and watch a movie again, which I watched a few months ago. Fun, fun stuff here. We're going to get into the game here. I'll show you how it works. You can use that one to reload, axe to fire, etc. And it's really, really cool. It's also a highly challenging game. It's one of those, uh, need to try one more time, need to try one more time, and get better each time. You're gonna make it just a little bit further each time. Just check it out for yourself how I play here. Just pay attention to the body armor in the bottom left of the screen here. You'll pretty much see exactly when it feels right is when my game's gonna be over. Right here. But we're gonna try to talk out enemies there. And don't go willy-nilly shoot bullets like crazy. Just try to be very, very casual with your bullet shooting, because you don't want to run out at the end for opportune moments here. And once you uh, get to a stage, it'll actually refill your energy at least. So that's one nifty thing there. And he has some really damn cool music. Love the digitized graphics like Guardians of the Hood, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter the Movie, RJ Game, etc. Fun, fun stuff there. Oh, I ran out of bullets. I'm going to have to reload here. Oh, power up. Okay, almost to the end of the first uh, leg here. 
really love this incidental music. Okay, I think we made it past the first stage. Let's see if we can do the second stage here. And the boss is absolutely insane in the second stage with like a helicopter that comes along. But like I said, one of my favorite 3DO games, easily in the top 10. Uh, let's check this out here. Oh, look, we got Sylvester Stallone here. He's actually doing a blue screen here. That is awesome as hell. Summer 1996. This game came out in 1994. What the hell? <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, we got barrels we can blow up to. Let's try blowing this barrel up here. Bam, let's blow him up. <laughs> Watch out for them grenades. Remember a guy popping up over there? Guy in the ladder, guy up there. Oh, not the grenades. Oh, no. That, them grenades get real. <laughs> I need to take that guy out before he takes me out. There we go. Oh, I lost the life. We're going to do a quick continue here, though. Yeah, you got to... So, just like Tron area, you need to know to take them grenades out. Don't let them grenades take you out. Try this one more time here. And it's so addictive. We're going to take that guy out this time, though. Now, I'm loving this instant other music here. Shoot the boxes you gave some power. Let's try to take him out this time. Come on, come on. Where are you? There we go. Let's take him out. Then we got the ladder guy. This ladder guy right there. There we go. We got this thing. This guy. But we still have a boss to take on. Reload before we get any more. Oh, what the hell's that? Where did that guy come from? <laughs> okay, I'm expecting a boss, but I don't think I'm going to be able to beat the boss. We'll see, though. Okay, we got him. Re oh, no, I reloaded too soon. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to beat it this time. Is there another guy? Another barrel? There's that boss. This is a tough boss to take on. Look, it's Top Gun style. Reload. More enemies. Oh, we beat the stage. Oh, hell yeah. I'm surprised I actually beat that. I remember losing last time. Oh, uh, see if we can get through the next stage. Such a... Oh, it's the monster still in again for the win. And I'd have to say my favorite obscure movie that he's in that people would not be aware of is Daylight. That's such a fun, fun movie. Or New York Tunnel basically becomes fun. Kind of like a Titanic style. Okay. Not the grenade guy again. Not this time, dude. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're getting better at the game, folks. Oh, I'm not letting him take mail grenades this time. He's behind that box. He's still behind there. But oh, we got that guy. <laughs> okay, who's coming out next? Oh, there's a guy up there. We can take that guy out hiding up there. Come on, come on. Bye-bye. 